check one two one two welcome back i'm the zim this is the zim video and today this is the art professors podcast a podcast about my journey as an art professor mostly solo cast me talking to you directly sometimes we have guests on it but hasn't happened very often so i am an artist teaching currently at northwest missouri state university got my mr last year i taught at san diego state university the year before that i got Graduated with my MFA at San Diego State University, and then way long time before that, I graduated with my BFA in Fiber Arts at the University of Washington. So that's a little bit about my journey so far as an artist in the in academia and an art professor. And we've been learning a lot. It's been a great journey. So thanks for joining us and being a part of it. If you have any questions for me make sure you let us know in the comments of the youtube video because we are broadcasting publishing this show all over the internet on, on a bunch of other places such as apple podcasts spotify etc 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 so today will be a fairly short one i actually just woke up from a nap <laughs> so if i sound a little Funny, that's probably why. A couple of things. Um, we're going to update on the Hiram Van Gordon Gallery exhibition this summer, the Tennessee State exhibition. We're going to talk about uh, my artist talk. We're going to talk about where I've applied to since last week for a job and a couple other things. Um, two weeks left of school, but today should be very short. <laughs> this could be record short. We're a minute, two minutes deep into this. This could be like a 10 minute podcast I, I i imagine it might go longer than 10 minutes so i don't think i have a lot to talk about that's come up since last week we are just basically on our you know uh holding steady you know coasting out you know making sure we're we're making it through the semester so i'll update you on everything if this is the new time that you've um joined us then i'll try to do my best to update you on a lot um if this if you've been here for a while then uh, don't worry, it won't be that long. And then we'll come back next week with hopefully more interesting information. But who knows, maybe I'll think of something that I didn't know I was wanted to talk about within the next few minutes here and just start talking about it. All right, so here we go. First off, here in Van Gordon Gallery, Tennessee State University, May 13th through the 30th, I have an exhibition. What I do is um, primary live stream performative um, work. So... I draw a lot, so I'm gonna draw 72 drawings of Justin Jones and 69 drawings of Justin Pearson, the two Tennessee state legislators that are you know, advocating for gun reform that have had a really tough time of it because they're, you know, the conservative, there's a conservative supermajority in their, you know, state Senate, state legislator. So they just kind of, it, it's an uphill battle for them. And I want to help amplify their voices and say, hey, this is important that, that what's talking about. So I managed to secure an exhibition in Tennessee for it, which is awesome. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was emailing every place in Tennessee and others outside as well. I, I don't remember now that I'm thinking about it. I don't remember where I was trying to secure. I think it was mostly just Tennessee. I was just like blasted every art space I could find in Tennessee and I'm like hey I got this idea I want to do this exhibition what do you think most of them didn't even respond the few that do told me hey we're already booked and then the one that was like oh well we actually have time in the summer because we are a university and they basically shut down so there won't be many people there in terms of just you know student body type stuff but you know hey it's a space to make the art i'll have the documentation of it maybe local press will get involved if it, if they think it's worthy of their attention and then i'll have that and who knows you never know it, all you need is that one person right as they say you only need that one person to notice what you're doing and it could change your life forever so who knows maybe that one person will be there Will I be ready for it? I don't know. There's a lot to think about in terms of like that idea of like what prevents you from gaining the, the success that you perceive that you want. You know, sometimes what you want isn't what you really want and the universe knows it. You know, I'm a metaphysical dude, but I don't know. I would like to amp I would like to raise my status as an artist. And how can I do that? Is if I'm being written about 
I'm being shared about, I'm being talked about, that helps. So hopefully we can get that going because that would be excellent. Um, so the big news though about it, so I am still waiting on my paycheck. I told you last week that I have a paycheck coming from, from freelance work I did and it hasn't shown up yet. It's Friday. I did get a message from the people like we sent it out and that was on like Tuesday, I think. They said, your, your money's in the mail. So I'm waiting. Um, I was hoping it would be here by today. I just checked my mailbox, but maybe it'll come tomorrow. Maybe it'll come Monday. But once that hits, once that's in my hot little hands here, um, I'm going to reserve an Airbnb at uh, in Tennessee near in near the exhibition place. So hopefully it'll still be available once it's there. Because I just, yeah, I need. I can't reserve it until I have that money. Because it, yeah. So we'll be doing that hopefully next week and hopefully it's still available, fingers crossed. And hopefully the school itself will maybe within that time frame go like, oh, oh, we finally got it figured out. You can stay here, no worries. But they haven't they haven't said that. I mean, I just really don't understand why they can't they're not just like, yeah, totally. We have an empty dorm. This is where you can stay, you know, blah blah blah. It's great. I mean, they're not paying me or anything. I'm doing this like, you know, typically or not typically, I suppose, but it's not uncommon when you go to do an exhibition at a university, there's some degree of compensation for that. But this is just straight up. I'm just doing it because I want to. And all they have for me is the space and a little bit of little bit of help with sending out press releases and things like that. But there's no monetary compensation for the exhibition, which I've, you know, learning as I'm early on this journey of being an artist. And, um, you know, I didn't even think to expect that, but other people I've talked to are like, so what are they paying you? Like, what are you getting out of it? And I'm just like, well, just the space. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, what? That doesn't, that's, that's not normal, but I'm not, it's not a complaint. Don't, don't let me sound like I'm complaining. That's not the complaint. I just, I'm just so I'm just learning and I'm totally fine with it. And it would be awesome if they were like, because we're not providing any monetary support for this at all, then we can, we'll make sure that you have a space to stay, you know, especially since it's in the summer, most of the dorms will be empty, you know, blah, 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 that kind of thing. But that hasn't happened. So whatever. I hope I'm not putting out bad vibes right now. So I'm not, this is not a bad vibe thing. This is just like a, I don't understand thing is what it is. It's just like a, I'm learning as well. And this is where we're at. So the, the main change up to this point though. So here's the story about the exhibition. I was started off with going to make um, my drawings on 18 by 24 paper. That was the plan, 18 by 24. I have since, and then, I managed to acquire a bunch of paper that was 22 by 30. And I was like, oh, great, free paper. I got 22 by 30, watercolor paper, good brand. It's all sitting. It's actually, if those of you that are watching, it's all sitting behind me, that 22 by 30 size. And then I did a test a couple weeks ago. I did a test drawing on it. And I've had it up in my living room. I did a test drawing with like the, the test kind of uh, placing of how I'll organize it. Since they're larger, it's going to fill up more space and all this stuff. And I've had it in my living room. And the la like last week, I'd walk around I'm like, what smells so bad? What is like something smells really bad, like butt crack bad, you know, like really bad. So I was like, what is going on? My, my stinky, my smell. I'm like checking myself. I'm like, what? And then I remembered, oh, the paper smells. Because when I made the, the drawings and then I did, I flattened it out with an iron and even unlocked the smell even more or this. And I was like, whoa, that smells really bad. That's not, I'm not used to that. The paper, I've, I've never had paper smell. And then it's just been, I've been in there and it's like, this smells really bad. And I was like, if this is filling the entire gallery, and this paper I have, all of it smells even partially like this. The gallery is going to stink so bad. And so I was like, really? And then I started looking on like, why does this paper smell so bad? And I've learned stuff. So 
up to this point, I've just been buying paper and drawing on it, not thinking about really anything about the paper and just drawing and going. And it's, it's like, great. But what I've realized, what I've learned is that <clears throat> certain watercolor paper has this uh, sealant kind of, they call it, uh, what do they call it? Uh, sizing. They call it sizing. They have the sizing they put on it that prevents the water from absorbing into the paper right away. So it like gives it a little bit of resistance. They call it sizing. Some of that sizing is made from animal products. So the sizing itself could just smell all by itself because it's made from animal products. And this brand of paper that I used does. And some people I looked online, it's like, oh, this is, but if the sizing is smell is the worst it possibly smells could mean it's starting to go bad. And then it could mean that your paper, like the sizing is breaking down completely so that you might draw on it and it just breaks down the paper. So I was like, okay, I don't know. I can't go through and test every single sheet of the paper. Um, and I don't like the smell and I don't want, you know, so I was like, um, I'm just going to buy new paper. I'm not even going to risk the fact that this paper might be bad, partly partially bad. Um, and I'm not going to risk it. So I decided to order new paper. So I'm now back down to the 18 by 24 size. I've ordered all my paper. It wasn't that much. It was like just under, it was like 350 bucks for 141 sheets of 18 by 24. It's, it's Strathmore paper, which is what I'm, all the paper that you've seen me use in my studio is Strathmore paper. I'm much more comfortable, familiar with the texture, how it works. I like it. I've been using it forever. The ar arches is like, when you use it, it has this more like this, I don't know how to describe it. Like this kind of like texture to it that when it's like drier, when you're, when you're working on it, it's like sort of sandpapery in a way and drier and I could see it. I now I understand working with it. The sizing on it is preventing the paper from getting super soaked through, which is like it's pretty cool in a lot of ways. But I'm just not used to the feeling of it as much and like how it works. So um, I'm okay with going back to the smaller size with the paper that I'm more accustomed to. And it also not going to smell. And then the smaller size will allow the gallery to feel, it won't feel as cramped. Like it was going to be sort of, it was going to be like wall to wall, wallpapered. You know, it was going to every, I had like almost just enough space to fit all the drawings. But now it'll give me a little more flexibility um, on where the drawings will be hanging, you know, kind of thing. Still going to do three high, still going to do that idea, but it'll kind of consolidate it in more part of the gallery and um, it'll just be sort of easier to accommodate. So I think, so that's what we're doing there. Yes, that's the news. I learned something new. All right, so also this Monday, so it's set Friday right now, 5 p.m. I'm recording this, April 5th. Wow, a lot of fives. Um, we are Friday, 5 p.m. on April 5th. Um, a lot of Fs, too. Friday, 5 p.m., April 5th. 5, 5, 5. Um, F, 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 F. All right. And so what we are what we got is our artist talk, which I'm feeling like I have the roller coaster of who I am and how I think is like I went from super stoked to like, yeah, this is going to be awesome to like last week. I was like, oh, I hope I do okay. And then right now I'm like, it's going to be great. Whatever happens. And I think I'll be able to ride this moment out through to the, to the exhibition. Cause part of the reason that I'm feeling relaxed is that everything else is in order. Like I'm done pretty much everything else. Like at this moment on, there's really no more like teaching. It's just guiding my students. So I'm not introducing any new assignments. They're just finishing up their current assignments. We have their larger projects at the end of the semester. So giving them work time, circling the classroom, giving them feedback on what they're doing. Um, you know, there's bench little check marks along the way, but nothing new is being presented from here till the end. So that's help. I got caught up on all my grading last night. I'm ready to go there. So as this last project gets finished, that's all I'll be adding into the grade book. I won't be adding 
lots of other stuff. I mean, a few students still have some outstanding assignments that they can check in on, but um, it's pretty chill. So that's probably helping me feel relieved about it. My stomach isn't hurting me anymore. If those of you that have been with us knew, know I was I'm dealing with ulcer last last podcast. It wasn't as clickbaity as I was hoping. I didn't get a lot of, maybe I phrased it wrong. It's, I should have said being a teacher gives you ulcers or something. That's what I should have said. Being a teacher gives you ulcers instead of teaching gives you ulcers. Anyways, um, so yeah, so I'm, you know, my ulcer feels fine. I haven't really had any problems with it. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about my artist talk coming up this tomorrow, um, s Sunday. I'm going to go down fairly early, probably in the after I'm going to do a, a, a game stream in the morning and then at like noon, I'll bring all my artwork that's all scattered around my space here. And in the other room, I'm going to bring it down to the school and hang it up in the hallway because we're doing this. I'm doing this sort of pop up art show with it. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So stay tuned for that because hopefully it's going to be recorded. I asked somebody to come record it. Hopefully they're still on it and, and doing it and it will be there. Hopefully they'll be, um, you know, ideally there would be, I think there's like, I think the room can fit like 150. I don't know. I'm hoping it's like half full. I don't know. I have a feeling it'll be like 30 people, but I bet I have a feeling like 30 people will be about how many people will be there. I'm hoping I would love it. I would have loved it. I should have, I didn't think of it. I should have thought of it sooner in the year. So I could have maybe had it be a required thing for the school, but it's just a volunteer thing. But also I kind of, there's that thing, like it would have been awesome if it was required, so it would have been full. But since it is volunteer, the people that are gonna be there wanna be there, you know, and that might engage, they, you know, they might be willing to kind of listen more because of it. So, and I think 30 people will probably be about how many people that are there, which in that room will look pretty small. So hopefully there's more, hopefully I'm surprised, you know, I do the thing. This is I'm, I'm I can sense myself in the same space that I used to be in when I was doing my, you know, when I was deep in my music career. I was like always thinking like this is the one people are gonna be at when music was like two onesie twosies. <laughs> it's like I we played to empty rooms many many times, but um, but I I'm pretty but I'm I'm. I know there'll be some people there because people have people that I trust have said, yeah, I'll be there. But I don't, you know, the, the as far as the re people just that don't really already know me and just are willing to be curious and be like, oh, Zim's talking. I know he's a professor here. I would really like to hear what he has to talk about. I doubt there's a lot of that. I doubt there's very much of that at all. It's more like only the people that are either my students already or previous students or I've talked to directly are highly highly doubtful anybody's thinking like oh this seems interesting let me go discover something i highly doubt anybody is uh even remote and then i'm hoping that having my art up in the hallway the day before that monday maybe will inspire a few people to be like what what is this work this is different because it's highly political and highly you know it's like so maybe people will consider within that 24 or that time frame of putting my artwork up in the hallway they'll be like oh maybe i actually do want to go see this because this is not what we normally see around here all right so that's going on with the artist talking for that okay so more applications so last week i also did my rundown we were at 17 places i've applied to i'm sure at least half of those are already filled um so we're up to 20 places i just applied to three more institutions just now I've started doing this new process. Whenever I apply to a job, I find it on the job board. I, I export out, I do a, like a, you know, I basically print out or PDF, make a PDF of the job listing so I can remember what they were ta asking for because I, you know, you forget after a while if I go back and look in the folder. So I make a folder for every, on my Dropbox, I have a Dropbox, um, I have a folder teaching applications 2024. You know, and then I um, have a, an indiv individual folder for each because each of them might have some adjustment to the portfolio, to how you combine documents, to the cover letter. Obviously, will be different for each of them in terms of putting the address and who you're at least just like naming, titling it to or naming, you know, addressing it to. 
So the new, the three new ones, we have Middle Tennessee for a one-year term position, not visiting faculty, but a kind of a one contract position, full-time contract. So it'll be like, you just have to reapply at the end of every year if you wanna work there again, from what it sounds like. Um, Parsons School of Design in New York is a tenure track position. And I realized something, I don't, I highly, 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 highly doubt that I'll even be, even consider, they'll probably look at my, my i mean unless there's something unless there's something magical about how i wrote about myself and how i who i am something magical about that that they open it up and they're like this is not what we expected and we like it because of that and they're looking at the resume and stuff and they're like this is this guy's interesting this guy is he's actually going he's actually trying to do something you know he's actually has something to say he's you know you know, and then maybe they, maybe it piques their interest enough that they get my letters. Cause I really feel confident that the people that are recommending me just are real, like believe in me. I full, fully believe that the people that are recommending me believe in me and know me to be able to sell me to them and, and put it over the top if I can get to that point. Um, so that's a good, and so who knows? So what I recognized about I was like Parsons, New York City. Yes, like this. I mean, it would it it scare the shit out of me to be honest. In turn, in some ways, but it, it would be a good thing to be because if you're in New York, you're closer to the industry of art. You know, the prestigious galleries and what who's deciding the the tone setters of art are in New York. It's one of the places is it New York. So the one thing, the, actually, the only thing that scares me about it is how to find a place to live <laughs> that is the only thing that scares me and then if it was like if i got that job that would be it i'd be tenure track and that would be the last place i'd work i mean i'm really at this point once i decide where i want to go tenure track i'll just make the best of it and be that and i've realized i've so Every day, you know, I grow and think and, and re realize more about what it is that would cause me to agree to a tenure track position because I'm very like not interested. I don't want to just apply to a tenure track position in like anywhere, like where I'm at right now. Like, and I don't, I can't work that, at least not right now. I can't work that way of going like, yes, I'll say I'll be here, but I'm actually still looking, which is what a lot of people do. And so, and it's fine. And it's not, not making any judgments on other people. I just know myself and it just would feel, I'd just have a really hard time. It would cause a lot of anxiety for me. And I just don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to work function very well. I'd have to be like, sure, I'm saying I'm going to be tenure track, but I'm also still looking. I'd have to be, and then it would be like, well, we're, we're hiring you to be here. We don't want to have to be looking. This is why we hired you. So we don't have to keep looking. You know, and I just don't like that potential tension that could arise from it. And just like all these, those kind of things. So for me to apply to a tenure track position, there has to be, I'm discovering that what it'll let me, um, what will allow me to agree to that is basically the per, sort of my perception of the school. Big school will help like big schools, like, you know, division one, you know, 60,000 student body schools, that big schools that's one thing and then prestige of school like parsons school of design rhode island school of design you know like those names that i've recognized and and they're in areas and then they're in areas like bigger cities more urban bigger city areas like small i don't i'm i don't see myself unless i accidentally in a way in this journey of doing these term positions these one-year positions you know within the next five years end up somewhere that like wow this is i really feel good here you know like something about the experience in a smaller town or a smaller area or outside of the biggest cities and the you know like the two the other two so let me say the other one so middle tennessee is like an hour outside of nashville or so i think if i didn't remember right but it's just outside of nashville it might not even be an hour but it's just outside of nashville so it's really close and then um, Ball State in Indiana is also really close to, uh, let me see here, I got the map pulled up. It's really close to Indianapolis. It's in Muncie. 
I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's really like an hour. I think, I think that's the one that's an hour, um, about an hour commute to Indianapolis or so just outside of it. So I just applied to that. that's a term position as well. One year term kind of thing. So, um, I think they're all can't remember what specific one of them is more graphic design. The middle Tennessee one is more graphic design focused. The ball state one is more, I think more just general art foundations. Ball state is about foundations, which would be awesome. I'd love that. But Parsons is, seems to be more overarching. Um, but it's also a tenure track position. So, so that those are the three things in a way, the size of the school right out the gate, knowing it's a big school, um, you know, has all the things, lots of students, lots of faculty, lots of culture, lots of things going on. Um, there's the, the already known, like it's Parsons school of design, it's Yale, it's whatever it might be. It's a well-known school. I would apply for tenure track or I've, I'm teaching there on a one year or visiting faculty situation. And I'm like, I fell in love with this school and I want to be here for the rest of my life. You know, those are the three factors, but not going out. It would be hard pressed for me just to go like, yeah, I'm going to sign up for tenure track to whatever, some small school in some ho-dunk place in wherever. I just can't, I'm not going to do it. There's plenty of plenty feels to me like there are plenty other opportunities not to have to do that. So, so especially since I am interested in the visiting faculty thing, like I suppose there's a lot of people that don't want the visiting faculty. Um, and so they're only looking for those tenure track positions and then they'll settle. They're like the opposite. <laughs> they're like settle for the visiting faculty. If that's they're like under the gun and they need something, but so there, and then the other thing I've recognized is where I think I want to, um, where I want to work or live basically. And the, the, the first choice is there's this like box in a way from farthest West is Chicago. So Chicago is the farthest West. The farthest South is basically kind of like Cincinnati area would be the farthest South. So that would like a line, if you drew a line across that would hit like Washington DC, Baltimore area. So that's the farthest south. And the farthest north would be like Detroit. And if you drew a line um, east from there, you're basically hitting like Boston, Massachusetts area. So, and it encompasses lower New York. Um, and so that's the box. It's like the east coast, the coast east, you know, you know east coast of the water to Chicago, whatever the Chicago lands on the, what are those vertical lines on our maps? They're called, I forget, um, the latitude longitude, it would be latitude line where Chicago is. Then longitude would be Indianapolis or no Cincinnati. And then for the South and Detroit for the North. So that that's the box. So you have like in there, you have Indianapolis, Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, New York, um, New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, you know, you have Boston, Massachusetts, you have Rhode Island, you have, you know, Rhode Island School of Design, all that stuff. So there's lots and lots and lots of schools, lots of cities, lots going on within that box. So hopefully something manifests and that could be, you know, more likely to continue a career full-time tenure track, those kind of things within that box outside of that box, possibly second option will be going back to the Northwest. I've, I've been, now that I'm out of California, I appreciate California way more than I did while I was there. And I just realized like, if anybody says, this is my thought on it, at this point, if anybody says something bad about California, it really just means they're jealous of California because California has got vibe. You cannot deny the vibe of California. You can't deny it. And you may not always jive with the vibe like San Diego. I did not jive with the vibe. It was too laid back. It was like something not that I wasn't down with, but it's got vibe. You cannot deny the vibe you have. So much culture comes out of California. Obviously, you have the movie industry, you have the music industry, you have so much of our American culture 
is comes out of California. You have sports, so many sports teams. I mean, it's just like, and then the the, the landscape, the redwoods. You have you have the beaches. You have just like vibes for days out of California. So you cannot deny the vibe, and I've appreciated more. So I could potentially see myself back in California if there was the opportunity was right. Probably more Bay Area, but I could see uh Los Angeles UCLA type vibe or something. Probably not. I don't know. If San Diego if San Diego State called me back and said, Zim, you we realize you are the man <laughs> and we want you to be a part of our faculty, I would be like how much are you gonna pay me? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So, anyways, so there. That's kind of more about the future, that the applications and what's been going on that way. So we're up to twenty applications submitted, and I'm sure I'm I'm feeling like we're probably gonna get to about the. We could get up to the forty a forty burger with with applications by, because I there's like, you know, more being offered like just in March all by itself. March had 10 all by itself. One, let's see. Yeah, around March. Yeah, March had 10 on the nose. And we're already five deep or three deep into April. So I'm sure there'll be another 10 out of April. And May probably be another 10. So by the end of May, you know, we could be up to like 40 applications. So yeah, we'll just keep it rolling. See if we get something. Hopefully the goal would be that we have something before the end of May. That would be ideal, but can't control it. The universe will provide when it's ready and I'll be ready for it. I'll be ready for it. It's just, it's just, it knows that the perfect thing for me is waiting for me. And I believe it. I believe it because we also have this exhibition. This exhibition could change my life. You know, something might happen that changes my life. And it's like, so I'll be like, so thankful. I don't have a position. I'll be like, oh, now I don't have to tell that school. I, I'm not going to go because now I have this opportunity to do X, Y, Z because I just got paid, I don't know, $100,000 for this exhibition. I don't know. That's ridiculous. It wouldn't even cost that much. But you know what I mean? Like some man, some some opportunity might manifest because of it. The, that person might see it as I was talking about before. What's up next? Two weeks left. We have two full weeks left of school. Um. So and I've already kind of gave gave you the breakdown. We're just kind of coasting out in a lot of ways. Um, look, I'm feeling good. You know, I hope I'm doing a good job. You know, I, I recognize while, so this last couple of weeks has been these like check-ins with the students in terms of like, we have one thing last week I told you about the, the second year students are doing advanced standing, which is like checking in if they're ready to move on to their more advanced level classes. And then this week we've had senior review, which is all the, ideally it's the seniors that are graduating the following semester. Every once in a while because of just bad communication and and, and just different reasons, um, some students do their senior review two weeks before their senior exhibition, which really isn't helpful, um, just to be straight. It's not a good scenario, but it's happened multiple times since in the year that I've been here. So, and, and part of the problem is because the, my position is not, so the way advising works here is the faculty advises. And so if there's turnover in faculty, some of the students get shuffled around and then some of the advisors don't really know that student very well because they're all of a sudden advising them. And so things slip through the cracks, like when they need to have certain things done by and just variety of things like that. So with these advanced standings and senior reviews and things like that. So it gets a little weird, but um, yeah. But it's basically just a check-in, senior review is a check-in to say, okay, next semester is your last semester. What are you gonna do for your exhibition? What is it, what's the work that really resonated with you? And you know, they're all over the place. Some students are really great, have a really clear vision, what they wanna do and have good work. Some students are like, this is what you have? you're a senior you're about to graduate and this is this is all you got this isn't you didn't you haven't spent enough time really making stuff you, know, you haven't really dedicated yourself to this so it's like trying to light that fire that last opportunity to light the fire under their butts and go like 
we want you to make good work. We don't want to have ugly, crappy senior exhibitions. And so how, what can we do this? Cause it's kind of lives, it's not a class. It kind of lives outside of it's, it's like, it's their work. It's like, it's a body of work that they're making because they want to is really, really what it is. And so, yeah. And it, you know, the ambition level around that varies greatly for, for a lot of these students because of the nature of this school in particular is not like a prestigious art school. The students that go into the school are kind of all over the place. You know, they're not necessarily basically most of them, honestly, and I know some of my students listen to this, so take this with for what it's worth. But um, a lot of the students don't recognize what it's really like when you are in an environment that's highly ambitious about being artist. They, they don't see it. They don't have that tangibility of it. Sure, there might be a few star students that push, but it's not an, it's not enough to move the needle for the entire body of students because it's not like the majority of students are highly ambitious and want to be where when you are in a bigger city and more prestigious schools, it's like you're competing against each other in some way, even though, you know, probably not like viciously like competing, but there's this awareness, like, you know, when you see most of your classes making amazing work and you're falling by your, you notice it more than when most of your class is making sort of not as ambitious work. And there's that one or two standout students. It's a different, it's a different vibe. So, um, but it's the nature of the school and where it's at and what it provides and just different things. What the kind of students that are able to go here and want to go here, it's a, it's a different kind of thing. All right. I think that's it. I think we did it. That turned out to be much longer than I expected. <laughs> See, I, I can talk. That's the one thing I'm worried about sort of about my my artist talk like i want to hit around 40 minutes but i also don't want to talk i don't want to use i don't want to go so fast at the beginning that i I, it only becomes 30 minutes which i don't think will happen but i also don't want to go so long at the beginning that because the second half of my artist talk really is where the real meat is the first half there's some important topics i'm going to talk about but they're not it's not really about my work yet i'm talking generally about work as a whole about this idea of what it means to be an artist at the very beginning and then the second part will be my work specifically so i want to leave enough time but i it's like knowing exactly so i i did what i tell my students i have i want it to be 40 minutes i have just over 40 slides so it's like one minute per slide but some of the slides are 20 second slides you know they're just like there it is and i'm moving on so and then some of the slides are long yeah i think it'll be fine i think it'll be fine we'll see i'll let you know well you'll know you'll see the recording or hear it or get to watch it hopefully fingers crossed that happens all right that's it that's all i got to talk about today um thanks for joining if you want to ask me a question please do the best way to do that depending on where you're listening to it is to go to the youtube channel find the youtube um videos any one of these are professor podcasts i think this is number 30 are we at number 30 oh i forget i think we might be at number 30 let me let me look real quick um art folder here podcast let's see it's thinking i need a new computer i need a faster computer 29 yep we are at number 30 so we've made 30 of these which is pretty cool so um, find us on YouTube and any one of the 30, just write a note in the, in the comments, a, a new note. Don't comment on somebody else's comments. It's less likely that I'll see those. So if you comment a brand new comment on any one of them about anything you want to ask me, it will notify me that there's a new comment. I'll read it and I'll be able to either respond. I'll respond to it in the moment, but I hopefully can use that comment as content for the next show so please do that i i honestly i mean i want people to interact with the things that i'm doing and so (laughs) i have to figure out how to create that i want you to be asking me questions i want you to be talking to me i want you to be challenging me i want you you know it's like obviously the only comment or not only some comments i got right out the gate were some of those 
ah, uh, you're new, you don't know anything kind of comments. And I'm like, that's your opinion. <laughs> so I, you know, I don't necessarily like those ones where it's like, I've been doing this for 50 years and this is what it is. It's like, well, that's kind of the point. Lots has changed since you've started. So, you know, this is what it's like now and I have fresh eyes on it. So I, I believe I have value. That's in the same way I believe that these artists, these young students right now have a valid viewpoint because they have a unique viewpoint that I don't have. You know, my experience as a student, as a person is is completely different than the students that are undergraduates right now because they are they were born in a time when the internet existed in its almost full capacity, you know, and it's just where I came, I cell phones and internet started basically when I was in college, you know, in a lot of, for all, I mean, cell phones started when I was in gra um, grades, like uh, late, like eighth grade is when I remember some of the first car phones and stuff, but they weren't, they were very rare. Most people had them. When people started to, more people had them was basically when I was an undergrad was like the brick, the Nokia brick phones and things like those, like those little snicker bar phones, whatever. Um, this is what I had was my first one was like that kind of thing. And, um, but it wasn't until like, and then it was just like, you know, technology was still, mo it wasn't as saturated clearly, not until like whenever the iPhone came out was really when Blackberry, I suppose a little bit, but then iPhone was when it really tipped the scales because it became obvious that it was a viable technology that was easier to use and made more sense. So that was later, you know, that was, and then some students um, are, you know, lived most of that generation that are undergrads now. So they have a whole unique perspective and what social, social and cultural it means for them. Like the idea of more access to ideas, but also more access to negativity as well, you know, being bullied and self-doubt and self-worth kind of things when, when you are a little more isolated, even though you're isolated with worldly topics, you're also isolated from, you know, potentially being scrutinized as well. So, which isn't necessarily the worst thing because it gives you an opportunity to build your self-worth in your smaller environments so that when you do get into the bigger world, you have a thicker skin, hopefully. Um, so I could see that being an issue with how the world works right now. So do my best to be nurturing, supporting um, person with my students anyway. All right, friends, that's good for now. We'll catch up next week. Thanks for joining. Hey, we made it another 40 minute podcast. So I was completely off the mark with that 10 minute idea that I was thinking about earlier. Hopefully you enjoy me rambling and talking. And like I said, please jump in the comments and talk to me about whatever you have on your mind. I look forward to it. And until next time, as always, be loving, kind, and patient. Peace, my friends. Mm -hmm.